shit in my own name. <laughs> hey guys, Bud Elliott back here again on Cover 3. This is my summer school series. If you're watching on YouTube, usually don't rock the hat. Today I got the hat because I got totally torched out there at Elite 11. We're recording this on uh, June 20th back at home and today I'm, I'm talking a little iowa state i'm gonna go to cycle alert i'm gonna bring on my buddy nick Oson. nick welcome back to the show man buddy it's great to be back man you're one of the, my favorite guys here and this is one of our best products so i'm, I'm really excited to be back man i, I just think like the, this series it showcases the the real depth of our network and you guys do a tremendous job over there so we're we're, we're, we're fortunate to have you uh last year iowa state took a bit of a step back in the record column lost uh, more games they're used to, more close games than they're used to, which you know, suggests maybe they're a little better than uh, than than they were, uh, you know, presented just by the record. No, Bill Connolly uh, still had them as the top fifty team despite the the four and eight record. What what was it like to cover that team? Yeah, definitely, Bud. So it it kind of adds a little bit too because this was like my first full season on the beat, and I think that I kind of got this impression that you know Connolly and kind of how you let in. It's exactly right. You know, there were some tough losses and obviously that record, not what the team expected, not what they had hoped for, obviously not with the fans either, but there really was still a confidence even at the end of the season being around the team, Coach Campbell, you know, people in and outside of the program. This was not necessarily a four and eight football team, but I just feel like the youth that they had, the way that they lost some of those games, whether it's a late fumble, a non-call, specifically a couple field goal type games. I think there was kind of this overwhelming sense of let's put this behind us. You know, it was obviously not what we had hoped for, both for the team as well as the fans. But there's still a lot of good things to take away. It's not like this team was getting run out by three touchdowns every week. And a young team, again, because if you're honest and recognize, they lost a lot of those top names the season prior, whether it's Purdy, Brees Hall. Any Wazirike, Charlie Kohler, just to name a few. All right. I, I almost never start a show with kicker, but because you went there and because I don't want to forget to ask it, their kicking situation last year was horrendous. I mean, Jake Gilbert or Jace Gilbert, excuse me, was 75% on anything 30 and in, and it was three of eight on stuff 40 plus. And uh, Drake Nettles kicked a few and, and made uh, made not, not quite as many <laughs> as he kicked. Do they have any kind of new kicker coming in this year? Yeah, so they got a, a PWO kicker uh, that was actually a transfer from Nebraska. I believe that was his second stop, but I certainly know he was at Nebraska before this, originally from Iowa. I spoke with him, got a good sense of when he decided to commit to the Cyclones, Chase Contreras. And, you know, I, I think that there is kind of an internal excitement. I've gotten to be around the special teams room just a little bit around camps and, and such recently with the prospect camps. I think whether it's Contreras, or just kind of Jace Gilbert, by the way, who was a true freshman at this point, having all those duties behind him, full offseason to focus on kicking. He was a four-sport kind of multi-star athlete in high school. I, I think you'd have to expect the kicking situation to be better. I know that people around the program are excited about Chase, but also Jace is still around. He's all smiles and from basically everything I've gathered, this is a legitimate competition as we inch a little closer to fall camp, bud. So uh, last year, the offense just had a, a tremendous drop-off. I mean, they were the three years prior. And, I mean, granted, the 2020 is a COVID year, so I, I don't know how much you want to count or not count that. I, In my own data, I, I kind of regress it out a little bit because I just don't know what's real. They were 27th, 16th, 32nd in Conley's SP+. Plus. Last year, they dropped to 110th, which is – Probably the biggest year over year drop off. I'm trying to think who else really could have been similar. Maybe Colorado State was 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 a pretty good drop off too. But uh, I mean, that's just an enormous drop off. What what went wrong uh, with with this offense last year? Yeah, I think if we're being honest, I think there are a few things really to look at. But as I kind of mentioned, the team lost a lot of kind of players that they really relied upon uh, from one year to the next. That's Brock Purdy. So you're getting a new quarterback. Brees Hall, one of the best running backs in the country the last few years. Names like that. Obviously, Xavier Hutchinson was still here, but it was the first year as Hunter Decker's really kind of being the starter. I think that figuring out a rhythm took a little bit for him at times. Obviously, the turnover bug, both throughout good times and bad during the year, that was something that they couldn't necessarily get a hold of. And then just kind of some more intertwined things like offensive line play certainly struggled. 
There were massive injuries like Jirel Brock, obviously a name you're familiar with. And then I, I just felt like the play calling, I'm not one that usually points to that and I'm not going to here, but I think all those things mentioned along with maybe some of the plays just being a, a, a tad repetitive late in the season as things kind of were heading in that downward trajectory for Iowa State. I think it's a multitude of things. And when you look at this season, I think a lot of those things are already getting shored up, if we're being quite honest. So Hunter Deckers last year um, you know, played basically the whole season, all, all, almost all the snaps, 19 to 14 touchdown interception ratio, um, pretty low success rate, just like not – not great. I I was kind of excited about a guy they're bringing in in JJ Cole. Did JJ Cole have a chance to just outright win this job? I and mean, I know he's a true freshman, but uh, did Deckers do enough to where like you know to where it's his job if he stays healthy? Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. But I'll tell you, a lot of people are very very excited about Cole. That's people that cover the team. Obviously, I was around him in recruiting, of course. That's the fans and and people in and around the top of the program are very excited. I got the sense speaking, you know, on the record with coaches like Campbell and, and Shieldhouse right after the year, Shieldhouse, the new offensive coordinator, as well as just kind of checking in, you know, on things throughout this team. I think there was a sense of a legitimate competition. And from what I've gathered, Cole has come in and just blown people away with his work ethic. Obviously his talent on the field. I, I've seen him at, you know, camps, like I mentioned, putting the time in with some of the younger kids. He's not the only name that I would mention there, but a great name to know, obviously, potentially this fall, but long term as well. I really think he is a guy that, you know, we rated very well at 247. I think he's a legitimate high four star talent and somebody that's got pro potential down the line. They also added, and this one kind of caught my eye. So Tanner Hughes out of uh, uh, is it Butte? Uh, community college, I, I, I think yes, uh, as, as a late ad, big bodied kid, 6'5", 235. Have, have you had a chance to see him yet? Is it potentially just a depth move or, or do you think that's somebody they believe could come in and, and you know compete for the starting spot? Yeah, so it, it's interesting. Obviously, that got a lot of buzz here these last couple months. Kind of when we're recording, it was in this last month or so. I've seen him in person, actually, uh, kind of just working out around the camps, watched some of his film and actually interviewed him. And what I'll say about him, Great kid. I think it's a good addition. He's coming in ready to work. But there are a couple things. He's more of a, you know, kind of sizable mobile type guy that I'm not sure they necessarily would have said that they had. I don't think Deckers was quite as mobile as people expected. And, and I wouldn't say Rocco Becht or JJ Cole necessarily pride themselves on mobility fully. Additionally, even back in January or February, but I reported to our VIPs that there was a decent chance Iowa State was looking for some depth, whether that be scholarship or PWO, just because I keep hitting on injuries. They did not want a repeat of what happened with the running back room last year with legitimate three out of the top four guys injured at times. And they also did not want basically what they saw happen to Brock Purdy in the NFL, just having to get to that emergency option. So I would be pretty surprised if, if Hughes was a guy that really started games for Iowa State, but I think that he's a legitimate D1 and potential P5 guy with some mobility. Last year you mentioned Jarrell Barak uh, got hurt. If healthy, he's certainly a, a quality running back. It, if not healthy, do they feel better about the depth this year? Who do they have behind him? Without question. I think the first name I'd go with is Cartavius Norton. Uh, he showed some flashes last season really early before, unfortunately, getting injured. He, he was hurt a lot of the year, similar to Brock. But Cartavius Norton will be a second-year guy here from Georgia. I believe it was a three-star running back. They added somebody from the portal, A.J. Harris, Arlen Harris Jr., a Stanford transfer, four-star recruit. He kind of showed himself in the spring game. You know, you got decent speed, but big, strong, tough running, you know, running back actually from the Midwest. So that's a good addition. And then Eli Sanders an Arizona kid, I believe this will be his third season here, redshirt sophomore. They decided to redshirt him 2021 at the end because he really is that good of a player. I have not heard too many players, bud, that got more buzz coming out of spring ball than Eli Sanders. So I would say absolutely there's more of a comfort there, and we'll see if Brock can stay healthy and some of the depth of that RB room. So last year in the receiving core, uh, Hutchinson had more targets and more 
if I'm at the Yeah, more targets and more catches than the next three receivers combined. Like If they were throwing the ball, it was going to X-Man. I mean, Jalen Noel, 12% drop rate. Demetri Stanley, 9% drop rate. Um, Sean Shaw, 8% drop rate. I don't know if like the... Uh, the official score for Iowa State is just especially harsh on this, but those are all um, those are all pretty bad as far as the, the number of passes uh, dropped. And, and I, I mean, I think hell didn't Hutchinson have a drop against Texas that that, that could have beat them, if I recall, or maybe that was somebody else. It, that was X. Yep. The the loss of, of of X there. Do you think these guys could take a step up? Because like if I'm if I'm betting on this offense to be better this year, I'm a little sketched by by the quality of the receiver play last year. Like they need these guys to step up in the worst way. Yeah. You know, I think it can be better for a couple of reasons, bud. you know, obviously Decker's locked into Hutchinson a lot and, and I don't necessarily blame him because Decker's did not have a lot of time at times. And 163 I, targets is just, <laughs> that's got to lead the country. Right? I, oh I, yeah. Like I, believe it did. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. That's NFL type numbers if we're if we're being honest. So yeah, they you know, didn't Hutchinson, play a bowl game. That's twelve. That's twelve games. One hundred sixty three. Like, yeah. So he he won't be there. Uh, Hutchinson won't to you know kind of be that clear cut top guy to kind of focus on uh, with the Cyclones. I also think that you know while they lose him, the depth in this room is really really good. But I mean, there are you know maybe a name or two I'll drop just in terms of freshmen later on, but even just looking at guys that are coming back or just new to the program from other programs, Jalen Knoll, I, I do not see, you know, a drop rate being kind of in that area this season. He's had a really good spring. Jaden Higgins, a wide out from Eastern Kentucky transfer, good size. Sounds like he's been, really been looking the part as a top one or two wide out. You get Dimitri Stanley back. I think it's going to help also, bud. The tight end room is going to be a little better this season with some major depth and some of these young talents coming in. The ball should be spread out a little more in this offense with Campbell and Shieldhouse. And I'd have to say overall, the, the receiving core will miss X, but I think the talent will be a little more spread out in 2023. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, offensive line wise, uh, I thought they took a large step back last year, despite having like, I guess, decent health. M m most of their guys played, you know, 800 plus snaps. Four of their five guys played 800 plus snaps. Now they do lose downing. Who do you think on this line could step up this year and, and, and play better? Yeah, you know, I, I've really heard about a couple guys. I think, you know, two players that have been around for a while, uh, but one that's had incredible buzz coming out of spring, you know, Daryl Simmons. I think he's a guy that has really benefited from this, this new O-line coach and Ryan Clinton. So he's been around, but I, I've heard great things about him. Uh, Hufford has been around several years, but he's been at camp looking really the best shape that he's really seemingly been in. A couple of the younger players that will kind of work into those spots uh, from, you know, Downing, that'll be Peterson and Jim Boniface. They've kind of been running with some of the ones and twos, as well as a guy like Tyler Miller. He's, you know, six, seven or six, eight, going to have some opportunities potentially, you know, on the offensive line, again, running with the ones and twos. I think those are guys, some familiar names, some maybe a little newer to people outside of Iowa State, but with Clanton and just the overwhelming amount of good things I've heard about him in the program, outside the program, parents of players. I think the offensive line will be much better, bud. And like you mentioned, it would be tough for them to take another step back here with a lot of talent back. Defensively, they, they also took, um, well, excuse me, they, they did not take a step back, but like they, at times in, in watching Iowa State games, it looked like they were just frustrated, you know, just because the offense just couldn't do anything. And, and they were just repeatedly uh, just, constantly having to bail them out. I mean, I know Conley had them sixth in the country last year. Like that's, that's kind of crazy uh, how well they played defensive uh, ratings. They, they typically track defensive recruiting, recruiting rankings pretty well. And like for Iowa state to exceed their, their defensive recruiting grade that much is, is to me a real credit to that, to that staff. And they, I know they caught some teams at the right time and, and, and whatnot, but um, now on the defensive front, like you, you lose MJ Anderson and you lose McDonald. Is there any way they, that they avoid a huge drop off here at, at, at edge rusher? Because like that's that's I know I know they didn't use McDonald at edge all the time. I, I get it, Iowa State fans in the comment section. You guys are right, <laughs> but like that's a ton of, of production to lose. I mean he he was all over the place. 
Yeah, I think if we're looking at that, honestly, it's going to be hard to replicate some of the just sheer pass rushing abilities and sacks, QB pressures that guys like McDonald and Anderson were able to bring. But I'll give you a couple names that have really excited some people, not necessarily all edge, but, you know, edge, tackle, nose. Say Cole Peterson coming off the edge. He's somebody that, you know, really got a little bit more uh, buzz and excitement at the end of the year last season. So he's someone that people should look out for. Tyler Onyedem, T.O., as you know, many people referred, you know, some people feel like he was a top three or four player in the entire spring ball offense or defense. That's a name you've got to be able to follow. Jefferson Adam, a transfer edge from Hawking College, somebody that I know there's a lot of excitement about. Will you see him starting games right away? Maybe not, but he's that pass rushing type ability. And then Dom Orange, he's on the inside, but that's somebody that, you know, if you watched Iowa State, especially that second half of the season, you know, that's a guy that's got high NFL potential, potentially that one through three rounds after a couple more years. You know, he's he's still a big dude, but he's kind of, you know, toned up that body a little bit, gotten a little more cut. He is a legitimate game wrecker on the inside. Yeah, I was curious about him because, like, like Orange and uh, there's a kid named Jaheim Otis at Alabama, um, who I took in our our cover three lineman draft, and I, I mean, just guys that have real ability if they got got the weight cut off, right? And, and Otis had lost like 90 pounds since getting on campus at Bama, and looks looks pretty freaky. That, that's that's encouraging that Orange is, you know, continuing to get in better shape because I, I I think they really, you know, really might need him this year. Linebacker, they only lose Vance. I mean, I know he was all over the field and played you know, almost 700 snaps, but they, they should be pretty good. Is Zach Lovett from Missouri, is, is he going to gonna factor into this this rotation? So from what I've gathered, he, he impressed very early on, and I think he'll have the opportunities potentially, but I actually wanted to give you a couple names of some of the younger yeah. players, but I, I would say, you know, Will McLaughlin was a big-time recruit. Uh, he's somebody that had a really strong spring. He got some time freshman year as a true freshman, So that's somebody, but for really the diehard fans that kind of read about these things for the VIPs, Jack Sadowski, a true freshman linebacker from Illinois. So he's class of 2023. He was running with the twos in the spring game, bud. And he, I I don't have the numbers on me, but I believe he registered seven uh, tackles combined, four and a half solo in that game. Somebody from the top down. This staff is really excited about, and and I'm not surprised. One of the first commits I really covered uh, in this job, you know, similar to Cole, goes about everything the right way, comes prepared. There's a maturity about him, and he just has this this vibe around him that he's going to put all the work in. I think he impressed physically, maybe more than some people expected. So whether it's in the ones, twos, wherever it may be, that's going to be a name to follow along with, of course, Gary Vaughn. I, I love their corner tandem. A, a, a purchase in Tampa like that that's that's pretty solid it nobody's taking those guys jobs I assume I, I am curious about safety they, they, they have you know they lost Kyle they lost Johnson uh, I mean reader was more of kind of a, a you know nickel type guy what are they looking like sort sort of at uh you know at, at nickel and at safety yeah so corner like you mentioned not too many better tandems in the entire country I don't see those guys losing their jobs uh, no, they're future pros, certainly Tampa next season. As per safety, so Bo Freeler will be back. He's kind of that, you know, hybrid, can play up in the box, middle safety type, like the star position at Iowa State. Uh, Jeremiah Cooper will be back. He got a lot of time. You know, he was really good last year, but he also got some time when there were some injuries. A name I certainly wanted to mention, I know you and I have talked about before we've done this show, and we really hope that he can stay healthy for Iowa State, and that's Malik Verdon. Yeah. He, he showed some flashes when he was healthy last year. I know that he's someone the program feels very highly about, but he just, you know, he was shut down a little bit uh, later into the season. Didn't get to be on the field as much as people had hoped, but he's got size, versatility. He just kind of has that like natural ranginess to him in terms of coverage as well as playing up in the box. He's somebody that Iowa State fans and really the country should look out for as we head into this season. I Obviously, like I, I don't think it's, likely this team makes the, the the big 12 title game but i mean our our fans how do i say this i want to be like balanced and not condescending do fans realize like what they have in matt campbell like like even if i mean i know they went four and eight nobody's ever going to be happy with with four and eight but 
making bowl games more often than not Iowa State has been really hard historically. I mean, like Campbell owns almost half of the best Iowa State seasons in history, and they've been playing since like before the light bulb. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't. I guess that's my question. Sorry, I, I, I was trying to think of one off the top of my head that, that I liked here. Uh, do they understand what they have? Like he signed the extension, right? So he's probably not not going anywhere. Yeah, I, I think that fans do. I, I think that, you know, throughout the course of a season, as you know, being on 247 message boards and things like that, you know, fans get frustrated and, and that's a spot, I guess, where people can, you know, reasonably be frustrated and things like that. But overwhelmingly, absolutely. Whether we're talking about this season, future season, I see it all the time, bud, with recruiting. You know, some somebody might not be the most highly rated, fans get on them and then more people with a little more reason maybe say, you know, let's trust Campbell and the staff. Look at what they've done. Let's just see these guys a little more healthy, you know, with more experience with some of these younger players. I would say that there's an occasional frustration point just within a tough season. But overall, Iowa State fans love Matt Campbell, and, and I certainly think he knows, you know, that love is very much reciprocated here. Nick, really appreciate the time. It has been fun. Everybody needs to check out Cyclone Alert for all the updates that I know will come on Iowa State this summer and this season, man. Appreciate it. Flew by. Thank you so much, bud, for having me.